And joining us now is our first major newsmaker, joined by the former Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, first time on television since he came out of detention a few months ago. Omar Abdullah, appreciate your joining us. Let's first tell us what is this People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration all about? You and Mehbooba Mufti coming together? Is this simply an opportunistic alliance? Is this a political alliance? What exactly is it? It is a continuation of what started uh, last year, uh, 2019, on the 4th of August, uh, when we met and uh, we vowed to protect uh, JNK's special status. Of course, uh, no sooner had we come together and said that, uh, that that night uh, a number of us were picked up and, and detained. and. Uh, uh, that's that's where uh, the process pretty much ground to a halt until today because we were waiting for uh, Ms. Mehbooba Mufti to be released. There had been uh, a meeting uh, of some of the constituents of the Gupkar Declaration uh, a few uh, weeks ago, I think a little more than a month ago, in which Sajad Lone and others uh, were able to participate. But we felt uh, that really uh, for this process to move forward, mm -hmm. it would be important that Mehbooba Mufti, uh, given the uh, importance that her party occupies, her own uh, position as a former chief minister, uh, that really uh, the way forward uh, would, would start to sort of become clear once she was out and she was able to participate in the deliberations. So uh, obviously uh, to give it a, a proper name, to give it a formal structure, uh, to give it uh, a proper uh, sort of agenda, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, all these things uh, were discussed today. We will be rolling them out uh, over the, 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 I mean, over the next few days and weeks. Uh, but to, to come to the, the crux of your question, is mm -hmm. it an opportunistic alliance? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not opportunistic. It is. Is it political? Well, we are political parties, uh, so. Uh, you could hardly term this as a social alliance. No, is it? We is it? Uh, what parties, I meant. So to that extent, no, no. yes. No, what I meant, Doctor. A, uh, it is a political alliance. No, what I meant, Omar Abdullah, hmm. is it a single? Is it a single point agenda alliance? Single point being that you want to restore Article 370 and the special status, or you want statehood restored to Jammu and Kashmir? Is it just a single point alliance? That's all that it's about, or is it about reviving politics in the valley itself? It's about. It's, well, obviously, politics in the valley is about this. Uh, how can politics in the valley be divorced from this? This is the single most important issue in front of the people of Jammu and Kashmir today. Whether you oppose what the BJP did or you support it, it is still an issue, whether in Jammu, in Kashmir, or for that matter, in, in Leh and Kargil as well. So uh, this is part of the political process, mm -hmm. and uh, sure, it is going to be an important component of uh, politics in in both these regions. No, the, the but, reason uh, I ask is it you a single point agenda? Well, at the moment, uh, we are we are committed to the we are committed to the Gupkar Declaration, which is why mm -hmm. the name makes it very clear. It is the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration. The name in itself should should make it very clear that we are coming together to re-emphasize that mm -hmm. we are committed to rest, to to fighting using all constitutional and peaceful means uh, for the restoration of what was snatched from us, we believe, illegally and unconstitutionally on the 5th of August 2019 in the Parliament of India. You know, it comes though against the backdrop, uh, Omar Abdullah, against your father, Farooq Abdullah's rather, some would say, bizarre assertion that Article 370 should be restored in Kashmir with China's help. That has led to a lot of anger, a lot of criticism, charges that he's speaking the language of sedition, that uh, you are actually, the Abdullahs are part of the problem. If your father says that he wants China's help at a time like this to have Article 370 restored. So against that backdrop, how are we to see this alive? No, Rajdeep, that is not what, I'm sorry, I'm, one second, Rajdeep, I'm sorry. That is not what he said. That is not what he said, and it's not your job to, to quote uh, BJP spokespersons as if they are God's gift to truth. That is not what he said. He said that China has been commenting on JNK's internal affairs. He said that China has taken a position on uh, the revocation of Article 370 and 35A. Those are both facts. China has done that. Whether we like it or not, China has commented on the internal affairs 
of Jammu and Kashmir. That is what he has said. As far as what you are uh, claiming, that mm -hmm. what he has said, that this will all come back with China's support, this is the BJP's formulation. This is the BJP spokesperson's formulation because they are out to target any and every political party in Jammu and Kashmir that does not agree with them. So we you're, don't agree no, you're, with what you're they clarifying did very on clear, the 5th no. of August 2019, Sir. and therefore the BJP will use every weapon in their arsenal. Mm -hmm. No, the, the reason I'm there asking is you this is not... My party no, no, has Mr. already Abdullah, clarified not just the BJP. what was I heard said. Dr. I'm not Karan. issuing any further clarifications. Okay, so you're, you're making it very clear that at no stage was Farooq Abdullah saying what the BJP spokesperson you claim are saying, because I've heard now Dr. Karan Singh also criticizing Farooq Abdullah. I have, so said, clear. I have said everything. I... Look, I'm sorry if Dr. Karan Singh is going to rely on what BJP spokesmen are going to say then obviously Dr. Karan Singh will be on the wrong side of the argument. Okay. I have all respect for Dr. Karan Singh and his seniority, but I would have preferred if Dr. Karan Singh had picked up the phone and given my father a call and asked him, Dr. Saab, is this what you actually said? Because if it is what you actually said, I would like to rebut it. But instead of giving my father that courtesy, mm -hmm. Dr. Karan Singh relied solely on the BJP spokesperson's formulation of what my father said and then came out with his letter. Let me tell you though what, what, what Dr. Farooq Abdullah told me in an interview a few uh, weeks ago where he seemed to suggest that he believed that the Chinese intrusion in uh, Ladakh was linked to the fact of Article 370's revocation. And in a subsequent interview to another uh, uh, TV, uh, to uh, Karan Thapar, he seemed to say, suggest that the people of Jammu and Kashmir might even prefer to be citizens today uh, you know, of, uh, of, of China. It seemed to indicate that they were not happy with being sort of part of India today. All of this has led to concerns over how this is playing out. You know, again, you know, you're going to take one thing and sort of add new meaning to it. Let's, let's take the first part of it. You know, what, what uh, Dr. Abdullah said about uh, a causal relationship between what China is doing in Ladakh and uh, the internal developments regarding 370 is not his formulation. Mm -hmm. I can quote any number of experts who have drawn this linkage themselves, who have drawn the linkage between what's said in the parliament regarding Aksai Chin as the next agenda for this government and what uh, the Chinese are doing in Ladakh. So please don't act as if this is Dr. Abdullah being some sort of strategic expert and drawing these conclusions. These conclusions have been drawn by any number of strategic experts who have seen what was said in Parliament mm -hmm. and drawn the correlation between that and what China has been saying and doing. Now, as far as what Dr. Abdullah said to Karan Thapar on a program, again, all he did was reflect what some of the people on the ground here are saying. All he was trying to do was give voice to the anger on the streets in the valley with regard to what what happened last year mm -hmm. on uh, 5th of August 2019. Please understand, there is a lot of anger, there is a lot of bitterness, there is a lot of resentment about what happened. Now, you may not like what Dr. Abdullah said. You may find what he said in Karan Thapar's interview disagreeable. But please look at what happened. And I'll give you a very concrete example. Look at what happened to me on Twitter because I took a position contrary to that. And, 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 and actually took a position that China was not uh, sort of, uh, that looking towards China was not in the interests of the people of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And uh, respected journalists, people who work for national channels, uh, went after me and said that I was absolutely wrong. I was ridiculing the sentiment on the ground. I had no business calling myself a Kashmiri and, and all the rest of it. So, I mean, all he was doing was, mm -hmm. ex was, was giving voice to, to what I had faced on social media. You know, it's as simple as that. He's not, he's not advocating a role for China in Jammu and Kashmir. You know, you're he's saying... only telling you what, what, A, what people are saying here, right. but also what the... the yeah. You know, you're, you're saying that he's mirroring the anger and resentment on the streets of Srinagar and Kashmir, but there are those who will say that the anger is not necessarily just against New Delhi and what happened last year, but it's also against the Abdullahs, the Muftis, those who are seen to be the family-run parties who have controlled J Jammu and Kashmir. You know, again, How do you respond Rajdeep, to that? You love this, you love this, you love this Muftis and, and Abdullah's argument. Of course, I'll, 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 I'll respond to it. This anger is not about the Muftis and, and the Abdullahs, because if it was, why aren't they then quite happily adopting the BJP or the BJP's uh, 
uh, recent uh, sort of king's party that has been formed here. Please show me a single piece of political activity that these two uh, entities have been able to do. If the anger is against the Abdullahs and the Muftis, then why is it that BJP sarpanches and punches are unfortunately being targeted by militants uh, in this day and age? Why is the, the, the King's Party not able to conduct poli any political activity in the valley? If this anger is about the Muftis mm -hmm. and the Abdullahs, then we were locked up. Mehbooba Mufti came out after 14 months of detention. My father was in detention for months. I was in detention for almost nine months. There was more than enough time for you people to create alternatives to us. But suddenly, I mean, this, this anger is not about us. Yes, people, I mean, there, is, there are constituencies that don't like uh, mm -hmm. the, the national conference's politics, but that constituency is that constituency which doesn't like India's politics. They don't like the fact that we as a party mm -hmm. are part of the mainstream. You know, I, 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 sense, I sense a lot of anger which has been built and up you know, over the you, months. This, this whole thing about, one sec, I want to, I want to, I want to make another Please, point. Please, go ahead. I want to make another point. You know, you always look, and I don't mean you, I mean as a, as a as I mean, I'm saying you as sort of a wider uh, sort of uh, formulation. No, why is it that alliances with, within Kashmir rattle people? Why is it that the alliance between, I mean, this, this people's alliance for uh, the Gupka declaration has, has got people in a tizzy? Why is it that this tizzy wasn't visible when, uh, when all the parties and, and, and religious organizations in Ladakh got together, in Leh got together? At the exclusion of Kargil, they got together demanding something within the constitution. What is what is what we doing? Uh, what is what we are doing any different? How is it what we are doing any different? What? We are also uh, uh, we are also political entities that have come together and are demanding something from you... within the four walls of the constitution. We want what was snatched from us mm -hmm. on the fourth or fifth of August two thousand nineteen restored to us. So how is that different from what the Ladakhis did? What it might do, the fear, of course, is what it might do is only further widen the divide between Hindu-dominated Jammu and Muslim-dominated Kashmir. I think the, the, we've already seen the kind of reactions that uh, the Gupka Declaration calling for the restoration of Article 370 is getting in Jammu. The fear is that this will only balkanize the area further, only divide, only create even further this, divides. It's not, going, sorry, to, it's not going to be a healing this, touch. This didn't... This, this didn't... This didn't bother you when it was only Leh doing these demands and nobody from Kargil uh, chose to be a part of it? That, that Kargil, uh, that Muslim majority Kargil was not a part of these demands and only Buddhist majority Leh was a part. That didn't bother you. At that time there were no uh, calls for narrowing the divide and, and healing the fissures and all the rest of it. No, that was fine because it was, it was Ladakh and mm -hmm. it wasn't Kashmir based parties. But when it's Kashmir-based parties, then suddenly we are the ones who have the onus on us to heal the divide and to yeah. reach out and all the rest of it. If, if what we are doing is part of the natural political process, mm -hmm. what has happened in Jammu is also part of the natural political process. It's fine. They Can came I? out, they uttered a few slogans, they burnt a couple of, of uh, what you call these putlas, effigies, and they went away. That's fine. Tomorrow yeah. we'll return the favor. You know, can if, I, if the police allow us, we'll also come out and burn a couple of effigies of the Bajrang Dal and the RSS and others, and we'll go back home. This is this is normal politics. What's wrong with it? Can I ask you though? I'm I'm sensing in you, uh, Omar Abdullah. Thing very Omar clear. Abdullah, I'm the sensing Gupta, in you the, after the, one sec. Let me let me make one thing. I want to one sec, Rajdeep. I want to make one point. Please go ahead. I want to make a point. No, I, the Gupka Declaration. The Gupka Declaration is not religion specific. It is not region specific. It is not family specific. It is not party specific. Article 370 or Jammu and Kashmir special status was not unique to Kashmir alone. It was not unique to Muslims alone. It was not unique to the Abdullah or the Mufti family that you like keeping uh, to like to keep bringing up in your interviews. Jammu and I Kashmir status was for Jammu and Kashmir as a whole, and I include Leh and Kargil in that. So when we talk about its restoration, mm -hmm. it is not Kashmir specific. It is Jammu and Kashmir specific. And I count Jammu and Kashmir as Jammu and Kashmir as it, as it existed on the 4th of August 2019, not on the 5th of August 2019. Now go ahead. <laughs> May I ask you this? And this comes from what you just said, which is that, you know, this is your first TV interview, I think, since August of 2019. I sense, do I sense an anger? In Omar Abdullah, do I sense the fact that you were put under house detention? Your father was, so was Mehbooba, so are many others, political prisoners. Do I sense an anger against Delhi, a belief that Delhi has betrayed you, that you don't trust Delhi, and that anger is coming out today, that today you've reached a stage 
where you've decided, and I saw this in an interview that you did with a newspaper where you said, I will not even return to politics until Kashmir statehood is restored. No, well, that's a separate issue. That's, again, a formulation that was sort of uh, uh, given its own spin. But let me, let me answer your question with a question. If I lock you up for more than eight months without justification, will you come, up a, will you come out a happy individual? I wasn't kept under house detention, Rajdeep. I was locked up under the Public Safety Act. I was considered a threat to the safety of my own state, my state's people, and my nation. And I was locked up citing what grounds that I have encouraged people to come out and vote in elections, that my ability to bring people out against a boycott call is justification for locking me up for months on end. So please, don't question my anger because my anger is justified. My <laughs> anger is not... Uh, I'm it's not, not questioning about your anger, I'm seeking it's an explanation about, for it. My anger is not about, it's not just about me. I, I'm seeking... You, how, how, I mean, how dare, can, how dare you seek an explanation? Why don't you seek an explanation? Why don't you seek an explanation from those people who locked me up? Who not on, and it's not about me. Who locked up Mehbooba Mufti? I've asked who you. locked up dozens and dozens of people? Me, who Mr. continue Abdullah, to I've have asked, people Mr. from Abdullah, Jammu and I've Kashmir them also detained these... even now? Mr. In prisons and places outside of Jammu and Kashmir. I, I've asked them also those questions. Let me ask you this though, that the Gupta declaration calls for the restoration of Article 370. The government of India is very clear there is no turning back, there's no rolling back. This has been passed by parliament and they in fact uh, seem to suggest that they will go ahead with the political process. So where does Kashmir therefore stand today? where you've got two completely polarized opinions, the government of India saying no question of rolling back, uh, and, and you and other leaders of Kashmir Valley saying that that is a precondition in a way. I'm presuming it's a precondition to restoring the political process. Well, the, as I said earlier, this is part of the political process. Now, don't confuse the political process with the electoral process because that's a completely different argument and I'm not, I'm not even getting into that right now. What we are doing is very much part of the political process. This is politics and this is part of the political process. Now, as far as your, the, I mean, the crux of your question, that government of India says that this is a done deal and there is no going back, I'm sorry. Our argument is not before the government of India. We are not begging the government of India to give what they, they, they took away from us. Our fight is in the Supreme Court. As I said earlier, we believe that what was done was illegal and unconstitutional, aside from it being immoral. And we will take this fight to the Supreme Court to have restored, uh, to, have restored to us what was snatched away from us. So I am not going to go to Prime Minister Modi and to the government of India with a begging bowl. You, you uh, made a as I said, we will fight for the restoration of what we lost in front of the, in front of the Supreme Court. You made a distinction just now between what you believe today is the restoration of the and political... And also, another point. Yes. And, and also another, and also another, another Please point. Please go ahead. Please another go point. ahead. Yeah. No, another point. No government lasts forever. No, no government lasts forever. If anybody believes that this current government is there for, for, for the, forever and ever and ever, they are sadly mistaken. So it's it, no problem. We will wait. No, we no, will I... wait as long as we have to. We will keep this, this pot boiling. We will keep this fight alive. We will fight where we have to. But we are not going to give up on what we believe is a right and just claim that what was taken away from us was taken away from us illegally and immorally. How is this fight though going to take place, uh, uh, Omar Abdullah? I want to understand because are you going to go to hit the streets? Is, is, is that really possible in, in the atmosphere that exists in the Kashmir Valley that parties like yours can hit the street? And you are making a distinction today between the political process which you claim is being... Uh, I, is being not a, a, Just a minute. You are claiming that the political process has begun in a way with what you've done today, for example. What about the electoral process? I want to understand very clearly. Are you separating the two? And how are you going to protest against what you believe the center has done? Look, as, as I said right in the beginning, we will adopt all constitutional and peaceful means to take this fight forward. None of us, none of us, and I can talk for all the constituents of the 
People's Alliance for the Gupka Declaration. None of us are interested in, the advoca uh, in, in advocating a violent path for the restoration of what was lost. We are not interested in bloodshed. Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir has seen far too much bloodshed already. None of us would want more bloodshed on our conscience. So don't buy this argument that the BJP is trying to make, that what we are trying to do is to, is to disrupt the peace in Kashmir, because that is not our attempt. We are not here to, to, to further the cause of bloodshed. We are here to further the cause of peace. But are you there clear, are, are are you there clear are that elections... There are means at our disposal to keep this, this, uh, this struggle going, but we are clear that there will be no violent... Mm -hmm. There will be no recourse to any sort of violent means to, to take this agenda forward. Are you now, very clear, though, the, that elections... I, that's why I, are you very I drew clear the distinction though that between the political and the electoral. And I also told you... Mm -hmm. I also... Go ahead, go ahead. There are no elections on the horizon, so why should we even discuss this? As I said, the electoral, the, uh, that's why I drew the distinction between the political and the electoral. The electoral is a discussion for another day. Okay. There are no elections on the horizon right now, and I see no reason why we need to tie ourselves up in knots by entering into this discussion. This is a political process. This is a political fight. It is a legal fight. It is a constitutional fight. But above all, it will be a peaceful fight. I want to ask you, therefore, in conclusion, uh, Omar Abdullah, how do you respond to those who will say at the end of the day, uh, the Abdullahs, the Muftis end up compromising with the center. You've been part of governments of the BJP and the Congress. So has Mehbooba Mufti in some form or the other. Will there be a compromise at the end of the day? Or are you very clear now that this time there will be no compromise with the center unless Article 370 what, is restored? So I'm sorry, but Rajdeep, what, what, did, what, did, we, what did we compromise I, I'm sorry, but what did we compromise in when, we, when I was a part of the Vajpayee government? What did I compromise? Did I, did I surrender JNK's special status at that time? Was I, did I sit on my high horse and demand something and then step off and, and uh, accept uh, to go back to work without, without any demands fulfilled? It, there was no compromise at that time. What we did was in the, in, what, what we believed at that time was in the best interest of Jammu and Kashmir. Whether or not that was the right decision, history will, will, will judge us. But this, this again, this, this Muftis and Abdullah's formulation that we will compromise, where are we compromising? We have told you that we, we, we are standing firm on this and that, with that uh, uh, we, are, we are committed to this agenda. Again, I make this point. Mm -hmm. We are not demanding anything that is illegal or unconstitutional. We are only asking for what the Constitution guaranteed us, what was enshrined in the Constitution that, that allowed for accession of Jammu and Kashmir to the rest of the country. That's all we're asking for. Please show me where we are asking for something that goes beyond the scope or the purview of the Constitution. Was it not uh, Narsimha Rao, a Prime Minister who the BJP praises to the skies? Was it not, not Narsimha Rao who said, short of Azadi, the sky is the limit? Was it not Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the tallest leader that the BJP has created, who was bestowed with the Bharat Ratna? Was it not Atal Bihari Vajpayee who said, Jammu and Kashmir solution within the, within the purview of Insaniyat, Jamuriyat, Kashmiriyat? That was in so, the past. So this what is, is not in the Modi. We are asking for that is objectionable. All we are saying is that what that was Atal Bihari Vajpayee. This is Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi and so, the BJP so, claimed so, uh, that scrapping so Article 370 was always part of their so? ideological agenda. They have a majority. It, They've got... Rajdeep, Rajdeep, is it not? Is it? Is it not still India? It's still India. It's still India with a constitution, and as far as I know, that constitution is by and large the same as the one that Prime Minister Modi inherited. It's the same country, the same constitution. Mm -hmm. So we have every right to demand what we believe is 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 ours. Okay. I want to ask you... We have every right to demand what we believe is ours. You have every right, and of as course. as I said, we I'm will not take this fight your... to the constitution... The, the, we we've taken this fight to the courts. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, you've taken the fight to the courts and we'll wait to see what the Supreme Court says on it. I just want to ask you in conclusion, what have you learned in these, what is it now, 15 months since August of 2019? A large part of it you spent in, uh, in detention. What's the biggest learning for you in these 15 months? that sadly a country's sovereign commitments to its own people don't count for much in the face of a party's manifesto. 
what was taken away from Jammu and Kashmir was part of a sovereign commitment made by the Union of India to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. It was the basis, the bedrock for accession. You know, I, and I, it, was, Omar Abdullah, it was made a victim of a political party's election manifesto. October 17, 2019, Dr. Manmohan Singh said, Congress is not opposed to Article 370 abrogation. We have only criticized its implementation. This is Dr. Manmohan Singh. I'm just saying that you have at the moment a consensus, it appears, outside Kashmir, that this was the right thing done. That abrogating Article 370 was the right thing done. So it almost seemed that then you get Kashmir Valley pitted against the rest of the country. It's fine. You've heard the, the story of David and Goliath? Mm -hmm. Well, this is, this is the battle of David and Goliath. It's fine. We're pitted against everybody. This is not the first time. It won't be the last. But we believe we are right. And I'm sorry, but I, I beg to disagree with the Congress. Because what we are fighting for is a legacy of the Congress. What we are fighting for is what we, what we received from the first Prime Minister of, of independent India. I'm sorry that the Congress is not fighting for its own legacy the way we are fighting for. You know, Omar Abdullah, I've interviewed you for several years. I haven't seen you as angry as you are today. Something seems to have convinced you that it's almost as if a Lakshman Rekha has been crossed, you seem to believe, by the government of India. And therefore, uh, this anger seems to come out. Maybe I'm just psychoanalyzing you. Uh, but either way, I sense in you a, a sort of anger which has come out today. Right? Possible? Like I said, Rajdeep, you do what you did to, you do what you, not you. I'm, yes. When what is done, when what was done to my state, my people, my colleagues, to, 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 to Jammu and Kashmir on the 5th of August 2019, I'm sorry, but don't expect me to be all happy-go-lucky, gung-ho, very laughy, happy, smiley. That laughy, happy, smiley Umar Abdullah went into Hari Nivas uh, sub-jail, but he didn't come out from there. Very interesting. Uh, you have a message for Prime Minister Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah at the end of this interview? No, not at all. I'm sure at some point in time I will uh, no doubt uh, be meeting them. And it has never been my habit to talk to my country's prime minister or my country's home minister through, a, uh, to, through the medium of a television channel. Uh, I'm sure at some point in time I will meet and whatever I have to say, uh, with the greatest uh, politeness, I, I will say to them personally, I, it is, uh, I will never ever uh, seek to, to talk uh, to uh, the Prime Minister or any senior functionary through a television channel's uh, is, medium. You know, the one question I didn't ask and I must, that there is a third element to this table. There are the Kashmiri parties that have today come out with this declaration and alliance. There's the government of India, there's Pakistan as well. Militancy continues, uh, terrorism continues. Do you believe that, do you accept that there can be no normalcy, there can be no political process till that elephant in the room is dealt with? Well, of course, of course, like it or not, whichever way you look at it, uh, like you said, militancy continues, infiltration continues. Uh, Pakistan, when you look at the map of Jammu and Kashmir, as, as we show it uh, on our side, uh, a large part of, of what was Jammu and Kashmir lies with them. So uh, whatever your political persuasion, whichever way you look at Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the fact is that peace in this region, mm -hmm. uh, peace for the entire region, uh, hinges on a normalization of, of relations within the entire region. Can I? So, uh, I mean, I, I, I take the point that for, I take the point that for, for progress to be made, an atmosphere needs to be created, uh, but that is, that is far beyond my pay grade. And I hope that those who are in a position to create that atmosphere are able to create it, but uh, Let me... uh, as far as I'm concerned right now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on what I can do internally. Let me ask you though this, two generations, possibly three generations of young Kashmiris, the generation of rage as they're often called, have, have lost out in whatever has happened in the valley.
you know, it almost seems as if the frozen turbulence will continue for a while longer. Does that worry you that maybe the younger Kashmiri today has no time for either those who are part of the Gupkar declaration for Pakistan? They just want to sort of, they, they're just looking for something very different. Do you fear that you've lost them? This is a lost generation, not just the generation of rage. No, that's that's an important question, Rajdeep. When you say when they're looking for something different, what do you mean? And and uh, a, a little uh, personal note: I heard that you were writing a book while you were in uh, uh, in detention. Is that true? Is there? Are we going to see a book written by Omar Abdullah on his? No, not true. No, that's that's the one thing. That's the that's the one thing I did not do while I was. Uh, so what did was, you do? Uh, under lock and key, I did not put pen to paper. So what did uh, you do? How did you keep yourself occupied? Lots of things. When we meet over a cup of coffee, I'll I'll tell you. When we meet, less angry. Uh, I hope. Well, there there was there was lots to occupy me mentally and otherwise. Less uh, angry. I hope when we meet over a cup of coffee. Well, there were there were moments of anger as well. But as I said. When I, as I said, when we meet over, oh yeah, definitely. When we meet over a cup of coffee, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll be able to crack a smile or two. <laughs> okay, well, Omar Abdullah, I hope that uh, you can give us that smile or two. Uh, clearly, you've uh, laid out, in a sense, your agenda, and I can sense where you're coming from. You've, in a way, ignited uh, your, po your political uh, future uh, in this interview, and I appreciate you joining us and telling us where you stand so plainly and clearly good to hear you on television good to see you back thank you very much omar abdullah for joining us thank you